Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. Uh, got another tip video for you. Today, I'm going to be doing an updated version of a video that I did last year that was very popular. I'm going to show you guys how to read and beat every single defense in Madden 21. Now, I'm going to show you guys adjustments you can make, uh, route adjustments you can make after you chose your play, as well as I'm going to show you guys a one-play touchdown versus every single defense in the game. Uh, now, I'm using the Packers playbook, so uh, I mean, a lot of these concepts you can find in a lot of different books, but I really like the Packers book. They have some of the more unique ones. Before I get into the video, though, if you guys want to help me out, hit the like button, scroll down, takes two seconds. Uh, everything you guys do as far as likes, comments, and shares, and stuff like that really help this channel out. And if you like what you see, stick around by hitting the subscribe button. So I'm going to start off uh, working my way from uh, from cover two to cover three to cover four, uh, working my way back. So on the defensive side, we're going to pick Tampa two. On the offensive side, uh, we're going to pick uh, the bench. So starting off, the first thing you need to know when you're playing a game and it comes to reading a defense is where you are on the field because you're going to be doing math pretty much every single play. I'm exactly at the 50-yard line. And the cornerbacks are at the 45. So that right away is my first indicator that we're looking at a cover two defense because cover two defenses, uh, especially when it's zone, are the only defense where the cornerbacks are five yards off the ball. If it was, say, a cover three, which I'll go ahead and I'll switch over to a cover three real quick, you see the cornerbacks immediately drop back. So that's, I mean, typically cornerbacks at a, at a, a depth of about seven, eight yards, um, it typically means either cover three or cover four. Uh, I don't know if they have a they don't have a cover four in their adjustments, but that's fine. So ultimately, we have the, the only indicator we really need to, to dictate that's a cover two is the five yard depth of the cornerbacks. And now, if they press, obviously that would change. Uh, your next indicator would be how far apart the the safeties are split. So if you have a defense where your opponent is pressing the cornerbacks, it's going to not change the safety. So that's still a really good indicator because obviously, um, you know, if it, it's just it's just an easy tell. Now, when it comes to, uh, I'll reset the defense here. Now, when it comes to telling the difference between cover two man and cover two zone, zone coverages, uh, they give themselves a little bit of a head start. So right here, these guys are not facing the receivers. They're just kind of lazing off. They're not right in front of the receivers because the area they have to cover is more important than the receiver itself. If I switch over to a cover two man, uh, they'll immediately walk in. This one won't because I was on top of them. But um, the, you see how the cornerback on the right here immediately walked in over the receiver uh, to face them. Because basically, if it's a man coverage, you don't want to give up inside or outside. Uh, you know, you don't want to give up too much of an advantage. So if I'm, if this cornerback here is covering this receiver in front of him and he breaks outside, he can break right on top of it. But if he's playing too far outside, it'll give an inside release to the receiver and he'll get beat more easily. So man coverages will typically be aligned right over the face of their receiver. That's typically how they want to play that. So that's the easiest way to tell the difference between cover two man and cover two uh, regular cover two. So this is a really good cover two concept, but we have to we have to create more space. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna motion across, like I said, either one of these receivers, it really doesn't matter. Put them on a streak to pull that safety back. Then we're gonna put the X route here on a flat. That's gonna create the separation that we need because you're gonna see that that cover two cornerback is gonna drop down now, and that safety is gonna pull back this receiver, pull back the, uh, I mean the receiver is gonna pull back the safety with a streak. So this is a play that um, you can get a, a one play touchdown with. Uh, it's really just, it's, it's not going to be easy based off of the fact that I have, uh, I picked such a good uh, secondary. But uh, we'll go ahead and we'll do that one more time. Like I said, we'll just get this, wait for this Y route to get outside. And you can see with enough space, uh, he can be going, even against uh, the, one of the best secondaries in the game. Now against cover three, there's really two different ways to home run cover three. And I can really pick either one of these plays, the PA post dig or the deep cross. They'll both work. So how to read a cover three. Like I said prior, um, you know, your indicators are the depth of the cornerback. You have the single high safety. That's a pretty good giveaway. But the depth of the cornerbacks and where they're positioned. Because cover three and cover one are made to look alike. 
So if I go and I switch over to a cover one, we're going to see that the, the receivers or the cornerbacks, once again, they come in tight to the receivers so they can't really, they can't give up an inside or outside release. That's one of the better indicators for cover one compared to cover three. So in cover three, they're 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 not playing right in front of the, the receivers. That's just, just how it is. So, and a lot of people too, they'll man a line. So if they base a line, I mean, um, it'll change the look, but it doesn't change the fact that you still have the same cornerback depth. They're still about seven, eight yards off. Now this here could also look like a cover four. So once the play starts, you just have to watch the safeties. Now as far as the setup for the one play touchdown against uh, cover three, uh, all you have to do is motion out the uh, the B route here. This is a, a very this year's kind of unique as far as cover three is concerned. Uh, I don't personally like um, you know waiting for uh, this type of play for the receiver to cross the field like I'm going to, but that's pretty much what I have to do. I don't have to make any other adjustments, uh, and this B route here is going to cross the field and be a big play. Now McCourty's on fire right now, so he had tighter covers than he normally will. So when it comes to cover four, once again, we have the um, you know the safe the cornerbacks are about you know seven yards off. That's like I said, any off coverage you're gonna see that when it comes to cover four. At, after that the indicator would be the safeties. Now I was showing you guys the difference between uh, cover three and then base aligned cover three. Like I said it looks pretty much the same uh, as far as the safeties. So you really have to watch, like I said, cover four. Between cover four, like I said, even when I switch the playback, doesn't move at all. So like I said, cover fours and cover threes have a very similar look if they base align. So like I said, you have to watch the uh, watch the actual safety. Now as far as what plays, how to beat cover four, it's actually pretty easy. The, um, the X route here uh, just gets outside of cover fours. It just is what it is. These cover four cornerbacks, the way they drop back, they don't cover these type of routes very well. So you can dot that up pretty much all game uh, without any trouble. And I actually made a mistake there. I shouldn't have um, I shouldn't have streaked the, the Y route. Leave the Y route how he is. And like I said, these, these cover four, I don't know what's going on with the actual route running. But these uh, these these cover four cornerbacks, they're just kind of stiff. They don't really cover, they don't really, they, there's so much in their back pedal, they don't really do a good job of covering routes that break outside of them. And like I said, I don't know why um, <laughs> I don't know why um, these routes are running into each other, but uh, but that's pretty much the look. So maybe I can just put them on a flat just to me stop messing that up. But uh, you can see how consistent um, how consistent this route is. So it's, like I said, I put them on a flat one time just so that doesn't happen, and then you can see we can get a lot more separation. That's the type of separation I'm expecting. So same setup uh, as far as. Uh, cover three and cover four go. That's why I picked the same play and uh, Basically, you're just waiting for this B route to get inside of The uh, inside of the free safety between the two safeties now even with x-factor McCourty going on fire uh, You can see how we can hit a one play touchdown. I didn't really get the best throw um, I, Once again, I don't really have the best receiver, but it's really easy All you have to do is once he crosses the free safety here once he gets inside the free safety once again you can see how these guys are falling flat because there's nothing pulling them to do anything so based off of the fact that the uh, the play starts out where we at here with the receiver since based off the fact that this receiver here basically leaves this side of the field empty uh, they really don't react to do anything and they just they kind of split the field in half like pre-snap that's kind of how these safeties are gonna work so this side of the field they're like well what am I supposed to do and this side here they're basically dropping back by the time I cross the center of the field you can see when I cross the center of the field that's when McCordy turns around and it's already too late now when it comes to cover four once again it has a very similar look to cover four regular where you see the cornerbacks are back seven yards like I said that's always gonna be an indicator for cover four cover three but the safeties are much different you can see the safeties are wider apart and that's because these these zones a lot of ways act like man coverages even though they look like zones they really are uh, in, more indicative of man so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna put this this X route here on a comeback uh, and I can also do the same I mean, all, all comeback routes really do a good job of freezing the uh, of turning these into man coverages you're gonna see how they're basically just going to freeze uh, pretty immediately and then this this Y route here will just get right past the cover four so the same way that I was saying that cover two and cover four are basically the same thing you can see right here the left side of this play is a cover four quarters half the field once again is cover four quarters and the other side is cover two 
uh, which is why uh, it's called a cover six. You're just, doing, you're just doing the math. So all I have to do is identify which side is which. So on the right side, the cornerback is about five yards off. I know that's my cover two side. On the left side, the cornerback is about seven yards off. I know that's the cover four side. If I ever come to the line and I see that there are different depths, I know right away that it's one of those off type of coverages. It's one of those weird coverages like cover six, cover nine, uh, whatever. So at that point, I really just have to identify which side I want to attack. So if I want to attack the cover two side, I run the cover two, I, run, I can flip the play, run it to that side. That's, that's my cover two beater. And it's also a cover four beater. So if I want to attack the cover four side, I could do that as well so it's really all that I have to do uh, we'll just put this guy in a flat and then once again once this receiver gets passed uh, it, it treats it the exact same way as you didn't catch the ball I probably should have threw a little bit later but ultimately you can see it's the exact same uh, way to beat this play as if it was a regular cover four it doesn't change there we get the separation as that uh, as McCory just bites uh, so like I said easy one play touchdown against pretty much all those defenses so now I'm going to show you guys man looks we're in man cover two to start and once again, the cornerbacks are pretty much lined up in front of the receivers. But one more giveaway is how close they are to the receivers. Man cover two, they play closer to the receivers than in something like a man cover one. I'll go ahead and I'll pick, I'll switch over and you can see the difference. The man cover one, they play at that same seven to eight yard depth, kind of like a cover three. Because ultimately, these, these looks are meant to mirror each other, so you can't really tell which one it is. So that's one of the easier ways to tell the difference between cover two man and cover one man. When it comes to cover zero, uh, which is like an all-out blitz, the easiest way to tell that is the safeties. The safeties will be in very unique positions. You can see right here, the safeties are, are in man positions. They're not in zone positions. They're too far spread. They're too close to the line. Stuff like that's going to tell you, you know, all you need to know. Now, as far as beating these defenses, I think people need to realize this year, man's a little bit different. If you want to beat uh, man coverages, uh, the best way to do it is really more the throw than the actual play itself. Uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna see right here the Y route here. Um, if I make the if I make a bullet pass or if I make the wrong throw, he's not gonna get open. You know what I mean? That's ba it's basically the the throw. We'll go to that was that was the all out man blitz. We'll go to the cover one the cover one blitz now. I gotta get off this safety because he's he's gonna mess up the play. But, uh, but ultimately here, like I said, now I'm going to cover one. We got that. Did I even make that adjustment? Hold on one second. Let's let's do that cover one. There we go. Now we're going to cover one. See the cornerbacks drop back, safety in the center of the field. Uh, but basically, it's the throw that gets the play open, not necessarily, uh, you know, I have to throw that out. I have to lob it. When you're beating zone, it's typically a bullet pass. When you're beating man, it's typically a lob. So before I end this video, I'm going to show you guys a unique uh, cover one, one play touchdown against man, and that's the Z option. So we'll pick that. Uh, we'll go, uh, it doesn't really matter, we can go man blitz or man one, it'll work against either. So that's it, that's the video. If you guys want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments section with the like button. Other than that, thanks for watching, man, my shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.